Hey, y'all. We are so excited to be here. Um, it's great to be in this room. We send regrets from Jenna Johnson at Patagonia, who has come down with the spring cold uh, that so many folks have, and she's really, really sorry not to be here. I think we're very sorry that she's not here. Um, lots of mad respect for Patagonia and their policies, and we can talk more about that um, over the course of this panel. Uh, my name is Vicki Shabo. I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior fellow at the Better Life Lab at New America, which is a think tank in Washington, D.C., but works nationally. I've been working for the last 15 years or so to advance gender and racial equity through improved policies like paid family and medical leave, equal pay, pregnancy discrimination, uh, policies that help women and families and all people, people of all genders, uh, care for themselves and their loved one, make a wage that can help support their families, their households, their short-term economic security, and their long-term prosperity, uh, and be the kinds of humans and people and workers that we all want to be. So I'm super, super excited to be in conversation here with one of our longtime allies in the fight for paid family and medical leave and a real company leader, Tracy Laney. She's the Executive Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer at Levi Strauss and Company, and you'll notice her very on-brand jacket here. Um, <laughs> jacket, she, jeans, top, just perfect. Perfect. <laughs> for those keeping track at home. You know, if Patagonia had been here, I might have been conflicted 100%. as to what to wear, but I, I went with my own outfit here. So um, Tracy leads the people strategy for Levi's on a global scale, including diversity, equity, and inclusion, recruiting, employee engagement, talent management, compensation, benefits, HR communications, and more. But also, importantly, Tracy has a child who just turned 18, is turning 18 tomorrow, and has just graduated high school. Yep. <laughs> so. Welcome. Thanks, Vicki. Um, you know, Tracy's a mom. Jenna is a mom of two kids who use Patagonia Child Care Center. I'm a mom. I think so many of us come to this from a very personal experience. So my story, I was a lawyer at a big law firm in Washington, D.C. It was 2008. Law firms were falling all over themselves to attract women in particular. Um, I had four months of fully paid leave. But I looked around and realized that other people within my same building my admin assistant, she would have had 60% of her pay for uh, 12 weeks at the most. The people who ran the child care center, the mail room, the cafeteria, the janitorial staff, all of the hourly workers and the contractors wouldn't have had much if any paid leave at all when they had had a child or if they needed it for their own health issue. And that's not unusual. In companies across America, there are tiered benefits where you, what you have access to depends on the type of job you have. And so one of the things I, uh, was driven by and continue to be driven by is creating equitable baseline benefits for everybody. Um, and Tracy, I know you come to this. Yeah. <laughs> we all come to this in a personal way, and you were telling me about your mom. Yeah. So, share. So, um, hi, everybody. So excited to be with you. And um, yes, I'm only staying for day one because I have to get home for my, uh, my son's 18th birthday tomorrow, which is like shocking that I have an 18 year old who just now is a high school graduate. But my mom, I, I also just turned 50 uh, a few months ago, and my, oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, uh, but my mom was the primary breadwinner in our house, and I was reflecting recently that 50 years ago, when I was born, she was allowed to take two weeks off of work, and even that she had to fight for. She had to go to her boss's boss and essentially demand to be given her job back because the expectation was that a woman having a baby was not coming back to work. So that was 50 years ago. It took 20 years after that to get to 1993, when we, um, under the Clinton administration, passed Family Medical Leave Act, which at least gives job protection for uh, most, but not all, employees in the United States. And we're now 30 years past that. And aside from the states and municipalities who have paid leave, we still do not have a national paid leave program. So 50 years later, we still do not have national paid leave. And it's a huge challenge for companies and obviously for employees, and something that we've been, as Vicki said, really, really outspoken about and, and want to share more today about what we can do to kind of change that dynamic. Uh, but I was lucky when I had uh, my son Noah 18 years ago, it was a year after California paid leave went into effect. And so because I was a resident of California, I was able to get some paid leave as well as my husband. And um, it really was helpful to us as we were starting a new family and much earlier in our careers to be able to make ends meet. And it's something I've been passionate about ever since. And luckily have been in a position as the head of HR to make some policies within my company and also advocate 
outside of my company to really um, make this a national policy. Yeah, well thank you for sharing that story. You know, it's striking to me. So your mom went back to work two weeks after giving birth. 23% yeah. of women in this country have said that they go back to work within two weeks of giving birth. Today, in Today, 2023. It, yes, um, because they don't have paid leave or they're worried about taking the leave that they might have or they can't afford it. And that means babies uh, that are in unstable childcare or you know, uh, family members that have to step up um, it means child and maternal health deficits. It's, uh, there's all sorts of, of issues that we'll talk more about. But today in the US, just 25% of workers have paid family leave through their jobs, 25%. And the share of lower wage workers to higher wage workers is one to eight. So just 6% of low wage workers have access to paid leave, the lowest wage workers, and that hasn't increased more than two percentage points in the last decade. For higher wage workers, I'm sure folks uh, many of you, people that you employ, access has increased, but even at the highest wage levels in this country, fewer than half of workers have dedicated paid family leave through their jobs. Just 40% of workers have temporary disability insurance for their own serious health condition through an employer's program. And Latino workers, rural workers, workers in hourly jobs, those who are paid lower wages, as I said, have much less access and even have less access to the Family and Medical Leave Act which again has been in place now for 30 years, just 56% of workers in this country are covered for job protection. So 40%, 44% of workers can risk losing their job if they have a baby or they need to take care of a loved one or they have their own serious health issue. So this is what we're trying to change. And right now people are playing the boss lottery. You work for a good employer, you have an employer that's willing to give you the accommodations that you need, you're able to take care of yourself and your family. And if you don't, you're not. And what that means is uh, from an employer point of view, more likely that your employee is going to leave your job, more likely that your employee is going to be less engaged, and if you're a good employer, an employer that does provide benefits, it means that you're absorbing, absorbing the costs of other members of that person's family who's not able to take the leave that they need to care for a baby or a loved one. So there are externalities spread throughout that we can talk more about. Um, the bright spot, as Tracy said, California was the first state to enact a paid family and medical leave social insurance program. So if you're in, <laughs> yep. And that was, that was 20 years ago. So that program will have been in place uh, and paying benefits uh, for 20 years starting next year. It passed uh, in, in 2002. We also have uh, a number of other states now. Minnesota, uh, I don't know if anybody here is from Minnesota, but. Minnesota passed paid family and medical leave a couple weeks ago. The governor signed it last week. Um, so that's super exciting. There are now 12 states plus DC that have social insurance programs in place for paid family leave. And we want that to be 100% of people through national level policy. But a lot of this starts with employers uh, and employers doing the right thing, measuring the outcomes um, and advocating. And so Tracy, tell us about Levi's journey here. Um, so yeah, so Levi started on this journey before I joined the company, um, but several years ago, we kind of expanded, expanded what we would traditionally think of as pregnancy leave, right? So at the birth or adoption of a baby, uh, whether the birthing parent or the other parent in the family could take extended time off to take care of that baby, right? I think, but I think one of the things that I think we all often go to, and even in our own personal examples we talked about, is a child coming into a family. That is only a small percentage or some percentage of how many reasons that people need to take paid family leave. And so in 2020, uh, smartly, a few months before the pandemic began, we expanded that to include all of our benefits eligible employees across the company to be able to take family leave for any reason to care for themselves or a loved one, right? So that was huge for us. And again, we were super grateful that we had that at our disposal when the pandemic hit because it really allowed employees to make a choice that was best for themselves, and also you know, to be able to really not ever have to decide between a paycheck and taking care of someone they love, and especially as people were getting sick with COVID, it was, except, it was extremely helpful to us. But really, it goes well beyond that, but I do think it's important for us to all think about not just the moment of, say, the birth of a child or adoption of a child, but really about there's gonna be times in all of our lives, I mean, who here, has definitely taken their own time off from work or had to take care of someone else, right? It's sort of, it's gonna, if it hasn't happened to you yet, I guarantee it will happen, as all of us have aging parents and things like that. So we know this is what is really good for our employees and it's a huge employee benefit. I will also tell you though, it's really good for us as a company. 
because the reality is if people can't take the time they need, they will just make another decision. Unfortunately, too many employees decide to walk away from their company and their job because they don't have a choice. And anyone here, any of my colleagues here in human resources or other areas will know the cost of replacing an employee, the lost institutional knowledge, the cost of turnover is exceptionally high. And we still live in a world, and we will continue to live in a world where there is a war for talent, right? We're always looking for the best folks. And so I would much rather pay for someone to go take the time away, take care of them, fa their family or themselves, focus on what they need to focus on, and then come back to work. And when they come back to work, I guarantee you they're going to be more engaged and ready to kind of get back to it than they would if they were trying to juggle work and caregiving, or God forbid they decided to then walk away. And so for us, it's been absolutely part of our values. We're a very values-driven company, and this just aligns with those values. And so to make the decision was not a hard decision for us. It was the right decision. And we also know, and we'll talk more about advocacy, that this is actually good for companies, and more companies should be doing this. Um, even in lieu of a national policy because we really think it's good for them and their business and productivity. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned the turnover costs. There is a striking stat that says it can cost up to 400% of a worker's annual salary, 400% to replace that person, yes. um, which, which just sits with me so hard and has for a long time. And other data um, for Panorama and American Sustainable Business Council showing that somewhere between five to 7% uh, of profits human capital investments and ROI increase when companies put paid leave policies in place. And you, know, you mentioned sort of the flexibility that workers have. We often don't think about flexibility for employers, but when we have public policies in place that use social insurance, and we'll talk more about this in a second, um, it actually allows smaller businesses that might have tighter, tighter resources to be able to make the best decision for themselves about um, what to do when a worker goes out on leave. Because it isn't like people don't go, it's just right. that they, have unpredictability in their own lives and precarity, and their employers do as well. Um, but you know, and that's often surprising. And so I'm curious, in your journey, what has been most surprising to you as you've rolled out these policies and evaluated them? So I do think there's lots that's surprising. I think, unfortunately, in the business world, there's a lot of myths around paid leave. And one of the things I do a lot is talk to my peers and other companies, especially other retail companies, about some of those myths. The biggest myth being it's, it's really expensive. It's really expensive to offer paid leave. We've talked about the cost of turnover. I can tell you, paid leave is cheaper than having your employees turn over. And in our first year of offering paid leave, it only cost about 10% of our total projection. So these are not large amounts of money, even with a large global workforce, um, even with, you know, again, a retail workforce, right? These are not necessarily large amounts of money. The other myth um, that I think is out there in the world is that um, people are just going to take a lot of leave. Well, that's not true. There's still all sorts of things you have to do to make sure you get your leave approved and things like that. And again, back to I'd rather have someone take the time they need, never have to choose between their paycheck and caring for a loved one, and then that person to come back to work when they're ready to come back to work. And so, um, so I do think that you know what was surprising to me is just it, it wasn't even as expensive as we projected. And I will tell you, I mean, the amount of feedback and positive feedback we get from um, employees around how meaningful it's been to them, especially in sometimes a moment of crisis, right? We heard from Elise and Zach this morning about the mental health challenges that are facing all of us. People are now taking time away to take care of their own mental health or the mental health of their families. You know, I mentioned I have a teenager. I can tell you the teen mental health crisis in this country is profound. I'm sure you guys have experienced this or have heard about it. If you need to take time away to take care of that child in your household, or, um, that's something you should go do and be able to come back to work when you're ready, right? And so I do think I'd rather have folks take that time. And then I think the feedback we get from employees and their loyalty to the company and their engagement just goes up. Yeah, and that's so reflective of what we see in the data as well. But you all haven't stopped at the US. You were telling me about your global policy and why you've implemented a global policy. Right, so I think a lot of us, um, and, and I, I would put myself in this category, I think because the US lacks a national policy still here in 2023, we assume that the rest of the globe is doing this better than us. And yes, there are many parts of the world in Europe and Canada and other places where there are very generous paid leave programs, right? We know what those look like. However, what you may or may not know, Levi's is a very, very global company. We are all around the globe. 
And um, a lot of parts of the world, Asia, Latin America, other places, do not have robust paid leave programs. They may only have a pregnancy program for the birthing mother, nothing else for bonding for the other parent, and nothing for family leave outside of, say, pregnancy, and maybe not even that. And so at the beginning of this year, we decided, we looked across the globe and we said, you know, we need a baseline of our US policy for every place that people work. We don't want to be different if you're here working in the United States or if you're working in somewhere in, you know, in Mexico or Latin America, right? So we put a baseline in place. We expanded it at the beginning of this year. We've had 90 folks take leave so far this year across 19 countries. And because in some of these countries, it's actually quite rare to have this benefit, the feedback we're getting, again, is phenomenal. We have employees posting on social media about it, that we're attracting other employees into those markets, into, the, into our company in those markets, because it's so compelling, and it really is a competitive advantage for us. And again, at this point, it's costing us below our projections, and we're happy just to make sure we're being consistent for all employees across the world. Yeah, I mean, if you think about that, 90 people across, what did you say, 19 countries? Countries, yeah. That's not a lot of people from a yeah. business perspective, but that's 90 people who had time to take care of a baby or to help a mom, uh, their own parent through cancer or some other treatment or deal with their own health issues. So that's, I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, let's pivot really quickly to, to public policy, because I think that's, part of, of what we need um, in terms of setting baselines. And Levi's, Patagonia, who's not here but has had amazing policies for a long time, and a thousand other businesses and business leaders signed a letter to Congress and to the White House about a year and a half ago urging them to adopt a national paid leave program. We got closer than ever um, as part of the president's Build Back Better agenda, and Congress passed uh, a four-week policy through the House of Representatives. It fell out of the reconciliation package along with child care and home and community-based care. Um, and, but the fight continues. Um, and so talk, Tracy, a little bit about what encouraged Levi's. Why did Levi's join the policy fight that you've been in um, with folks like us for years now, advocating first for the Family Act, which is a social insurance program, and this Build Back Better? Yeah, I mean, we really have been in the fight for a long we time. Have. And unfortunately, the fight continues, and we will continue to be in the fight. But for us, it comes down to, it's the right, well, two reasons. It's the right thing to do, right? It shouldn't just fall to employers, um, and you described all the reasons why that's inequitable, um, uh, to, to just to, to do this and to, and to step up and do the right thing. Um, it is absolutely incumbent on, you know, sort of the competitiveness of our country that we offer this, right? For all the reasons I described why it's good for Levi's, imagine if that were the case for the whole country, that people could take the time away and then come back, be more productive, be more engaged, et cetera. So we just think it's good for the country. Um, we also think it's really good for business. We think it's better if everyone has this level playing field that we can operate on, um, both because it, you know, it, it takes the burden off the companies who are doing it like us, um, but also, honestly, as more and more uh, states enact this, which we're happy to see, it's administratively challenging to balance all these different states plus what's ever happening in different municipalities. And so, we just think it's the right thing to do. It makes our country more competitive. It's better for employers, and it's definitely better for the workforce. And so that's why we've been advocating, and we're so passionate about this, and we're going to continue in the fight. Yes. And so that leaves us with our pledge to, or our ask for you, um, and the pledge that, that I will make to help anybody in here who wants to get involved in this fight. And I, I know Levi's is happy to share information as well. So there's lots of folks in this room who work for media companies or entertainment. A big piece of work that I do is working with um, studios and creatives to try to tell better stories about work, gender, family, and care, and the business perspective in the way that Tracy's articulated it. So please do that. If you are a business, measure the impacts of your policy or lack of policy. Look into what it would mean to enact a better policy and join the policy fight. And so that's, that's what I'd love to see. And, Tracy, I'll leave you yeah, with the last I word. Mean, a couple things I would say. For those of you who are in advocacy positions, make sure you're thinking about paid leave as part of that, and don't be afraid to advocate without any government that you're talking to, et cetera. For those of you in companies, look at your own paid leave policy. See what's available, who it's available to in that company, and advocate for making a baseline that really is going to make a difference for your company and your employees. And so I think a lot of us have the power to do that, and I would say make sure you use your voice. Yep. Who wants to win paid leave for everybody? Everybody. All right.